Today I'll be flying on Qatar Airways for the first time on board their 777-300ER from Manchester to Doha Ahmad International Airport in Qatar. Qatar is the second best airline in the world and I've heard a lot of great things about them, so I had high expectations for my flight. My day started very early in the morning at my home airport, Manchester Airport. Qatar Airways use Manchester Airport's newly refurbished Terminal 2, which is nice to see and this is actually my first time departing from this terminal after it has been refurbished. Good morning from my home airport, Manchester Airport. Today I'll be flying to Doha on the Qatar Airways 777-300ER in economy, so let's see how it goes. Right now we're at the departures in Terminal 2, it's really nice and we need to check in, so let's go. The new terminal looks incredible and is much better than terminals 1 and 3 which are quite in need of refurbishment but not to worry as Manchester Airport is in the process of a £1 billion transformation program and is planning on completing the rest of terminal 2 before moving on to the refurbishment of terminal 1 which I cannot wait for. At check-in, there were many check-in desks open and some self-check-in kiosks dedicated to the flight I was on. I managed to arrive before the majority of the people and so I was at the front of the queue. Check-in took quite long though. I think some passengers had some problems with their passports, but eventually I finished and headed into security. Security can sometimes be quite chaotic at Manchester Airport, including during the peak seasons and towards the school holidays. When I travel through Manchester Airport, I always find it helpful to purchase fast track online before travelling, similarly to today. Security without fast track looks quite packed and so I was happy I booked it. Thanks to fast track, security was a breeze and I managed to get through in under 5 minutes which was good, so I could quickly head airside and explore the terminal. Manchester Airport's new duty free is amazing. There is a wide range of shops, restaurants, cafes and lots of space to sit and wait for your flight. There are lots of windows near the apron which I always love so I can plane spot, but when I was travelling it was dark so it was hard to see outside. There was Wi-Fi available at the airport, however to get a faster connection you would need to pay a small fee and the phone reception in the terminal was quite poor as well. I spent most of my time walking around so I can stretch my legs ahead of a 7 hour flight. My aircraft, Alpha 7 Bravo Echo Foxtrot, arrived early which was good so there was plenty of time to turn the plane around. It was then time to head to my gate which was on the new A pier and was around a 5-10 to 10 minute walk. Something that I find annoying about the new pier is that there are only single jet bridges opposed to the usual double jet bridge that wide body aircraft that UC stands usually use. The problem with this is that the boarding and deboarding process can be significantly slowed down and can cause delays. While I'm walking to the gates, I'd like to give a shout out to one of my cousins that I know is a big fan of Qatar Airways. So Ahmed, if you're watching this, I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. And there she was, my 8.5 year old Boeing 777-300ER taking me to Doha. My flight today was packed. When speaking with the crew on board, I learned that there were 317 passengers out of 357 on board, with most of the empty seats being in business class. However, my flight was turned around quickly and I managed to board on time. The Qatar Airways 777 comes in many different configurations, with the one that I was on probably being one of the best ones. My aircraft has a Qatar Airways Q-Suite in business class and is classed as a low density aircraft with 42 Q-Suites in a 121 configuration and 312 in economy in a 343 configuration, however it changes towards the front two rows of each economy cabin into a 333 configuration. When I first stepped on board I was greeted by the really friendly crew at the door and headed to my Q-Suite, in my dreams. I headed through a smaller Q-Speed cabin and then to my seat 17K which was the second row of economy. You can choose your own seats on Qatar Airways by booking them either on the website or on their app, however the prices are quite high which isn't too good. I booked this seat purely for the engine view out of the window which did not disappoint. One thing to be careful though is that row 18 has no window, if, so if you're someone that loves looking out the window, avoid choosing the seat. Something else annoying though is that online it said that it was row 19 that didn't have a window, so be careful when reading information like this online. On the seat was a small pillow and a fluffy blanket which was good and can help you get comfortable along with some decent economy headphones which give off good sound and a hygiene kit which is nice to see.
seats has a generous recline with a very strong adjustable headrest which would be very ideal for sleeping and on overnight flights. There is a very generous seat pitch, however, when the seat is reclined, the seats also move slightly forward, therefore reducing the legroom. In front, there is a large entertainment screen that we'll look at later, a USB charging port, a headphone port, a clean foldable tray table, and a large seat back pocket, with two additional smaller pockets which I always like. A universal outlet can also be found under the seats. I've heard lots of amazing things about Casa Airways' Oryx One entertainment system and so I had really high expectations for it, but I was quite underwhelmed from the selections. There were a decent amount, but I couldn't really see it being one of the best. However, on a positive note, the screen was big, good quality and was really responsive. Compared with the flights stuck with Turkish Airlines in the summer, they had over 600 movie selections and over 1,100 TV shows. I also really love the boarding music on Qatar Airways and after taking this flight, I cannot stop listening to it. Not long after, we pushed back and our GE90s began to start up before taxiing to the runway for takeoff. Around 30 minutes after takeoff, the crew started the breakfast service. The service offered three choices consisted of chives, scrambled eggs with thyme potatoes or a cheddar cheese omelette with grilled chicken or a Belgian waffle with caramelised apple. Here is the menu which is available to see up to 10 days before departure on your booking by the apps or the website. I chose Belgian waffle and it tasted incredible and the portions were really generous. Breakfast is the worst rated aeroplane meal while this was probably one of the best meals I've ever had on a plane. The meal also came with a small bottle of water, some strawberry jam, a plain nuggets with passion fruits, a very fresh fruit salad and a croissant that looks like it had been sat on but still tasted really good. The waffle had a very cooly sauce which tasted amazing including with the caramelised apple which went really well with the meal. There were also a wide variety of drinks available along with metal cutlery which was always a positive. After I'd finished my meal and the crew had collected all of the rubbish, I watched for a bit and then decided to do the infamous Lou review. There are three economy class cabins and in between each cabin there are two lavatories apart from right at the back where are the three. They are quite spacious and offer some decent amenities which are nice and importantly it was clean. Once returning back to my seat, I found the cabin to be quite warm and I wasn't the only one, however not to worry as the aircraft also had individual air vents which helped a lot. There was also Wi-Fi available on board. For privileged club members such as myself, you can help yourself to one hour of free Wi-Fi on board which is pretty good. 
For non-privileged club members, you can access Wi-Fi for a price of 10 US dollars for the whole flight regardless of the length, so if you're travelling on one of the Qatar Airways' longer flights, this can be pretty good, but if you're travelling on a short flight, this might be a bit pricey. The crew then came around for a second service of drinks including tea and coffee in which I opted for some tea. The flight was quite calm after this and I went to stretch my legs and go and speak with the crew. The crew were really nice and even gave some of my cousins as I was flying with some snacks and drinks and wished them a happy birthday as one of them had their birthday on the same day I took this flight. The crew also sent me some cool information such as the Qatar Airways crew that work on the 777 also work on the A320 and the crew that work on the A380 also work on the 737 MAX which I'll be travelling on soon. Just over an hour before landing the crew came round with more drinks and some warm snacks with a choice of harissa chicken puff or tomato and basil pizza slice and both tasted really nice. <laughs> The crew then prepared the cabin as we approached Doha during the sunsets which looks so beautiful. Before we land, I would like to thank all the crew on board for giving me a wonderful experience. Altogether, I can see why Qatar Airways is among the best, however there are certain aspects that I could feel like could be made better. Mostly including the entertainment parts, but apart from that, there isn't anything else major that I think should change. Welcome to Doha, Qatar. I'd once again like to thank the crew on board for giving me a wonderful experience and for taking care of me. I now have a really tight connection here in Doha onwards to Baghdad on the 737 MAX and I'm quite nervous as we did arrive slightly late, but make sure to stay tuned to see if I make it or not. Before I end the video, make sure to like, subscribe and turn on post notifications to see when I post my next video. Thank you for watching and happy travels.